Hi everybody, my name is Shannon and welcome to my channel, Another Yarn. Thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. Well, it's Tuesday and we're going to do something that I like to call Time Warp Tuesday. I'm grabbing some of my older books. Uh, some, some of them are a decade, decade plus old. Some of them you can still get on uh, used books or things along that line. And some of them might be out of print. Today, as I did just look up, you can get a used copy of this one. I wanted to bring this up. This is Scottish Knits Color Work and Cables with a Twist. And yes, there's some gorgeous pictures in here. There's some beautiful patterns in this particular book. But what I really wanted to show on this is the color work. Because I've been doing color work hats and some with patterns and some without. Recently, uh, let's see, you had the the bumblebee obviously a pattern on this one and this one didn't have a pattern but again it's just a little bit of color work a little dabbling in there and then i had this one very electric looking with the snowflakes right the nice color work and i've got some others but one of the things that i've been showing is the floats that i've been doing on each one and what that looks like. And it kind of got me thinking a little bit on how far I do my floats apart. This is the Bumblebee hat. And what would be a good project if you wanted to make some color work and you wanted to dabble in that and what that would look like. So on this book right here, and you don't have to use this one in particular, anything, get out some graph paper and just start coloring in the little blocks and everything. You can make almost anything. You really can. And you can use those for knitting or crocheting or Tunisian or embroidery. Any chart that you put forth, it can be used for multiple different mediums. So I wanted to kind of do a little bit of a, a, a look-see and a quiz, so to speak. Look at that. What do you think of that? You've got this snowflake um, motif, very similar to my hat. This one's a lot more intricate. It's uh, smaller stitches and things like that. And you've got a lot of color changes. And it's like, wow, that is a lot, right? So I'm going to show you a couple of them. And I'm going to ask you, which one do you think would be the most difficult? And then we're going to go over which one I would think would be the most difficult and why. And... It might surprise you on what might be a little bit more beginner friendly than what you thought. So I just wanted to play with some things like that. Here's mittens, but look at the pattern right there with that hound's tooth. I like that. So very small motifs. I don't know, that's kind of similar to right here, right? Just little small pieces, little small nuggets of color. And then there's this, which I think is gorgeous. You have the nice striping. It looks like a, almost like a Fibonacci stripe sequence going down the arms and then some beautiful color work and everything through there. And just out of those, I mean, that's just stunning. I think that is just so pretty. Which one do you think would be the easiest or the hardest? I think stripes are pretty easy, right? One row, that's it, right? I've got one color for the entire row, whether it's knitting or it's crocheting. Where you get into some of the issues, that's not necessarily hard, is the color work itself. So many stitches of one color, and then so many stitches of another color. How do you handle your floats? So if you're just beginning, um, trying to find something that doesn't have a lot of stitches in between uh, or, or having five, six, seven stitches before the next color, you're going to want to pin that float up. You're going to want to twist that and kind of knit over that or crochet over that so you don't have those long pieces. Like this chart right here, you've got a lot of pieces in between that are well over five stitches. So you're going to have to catch those floats. I definitely did that on the bumblebee hat. That's why on this side, you can't see the bumblebee pattern quite as distinct as on the other one, whereas some fair isle and some things like that, you can see that pattern because you're very consistent. So not only did I stagger where I picked up my floats, um, I also didn't have floats more than three. I tried not to do any more than three stitches on this. And you can see on the right side, between here, there's quite a few stitches from this side to here, right? 
that's a lot of stitches. So that's going to be a long string on the inside of your hat, on the inside of your sweater, or whatever it is that you're making that you can get hung up on. But you notice I don't have any long threads and I've pinned all of those up. So this one was a little bit more cumbersome because of that. This very simplistic and easy. All those little pieces that you saw on the other side, there's just three stitches. Now this is a bulky weight yarn, or uh, uh, you know, so three stitches is going to make a longer strip, but three stitches, it was easier to switch back and forth between colors. I didn't have to pin that float up. I dropped the snowflake hat, but on the snowflake hat, I did have to catch some of those floats and that did make this one a little bit more cumbersome. It wasn't hard, but a little bit more cumbersome, right? On some of these stitches. So on this one, the book, just drop some things. On the book that I was just showing, isn't that one pretty too? One of them, if you really, really wanted to play, if you're comfortable with knitting, if you're comfortable with putting forth your stitches, use some of the motifs on this book, on a different book, it really doesn't matter. But one of them that would actually be easier, no kidding, is this one on the front cover. This right here, all the chaos. You're using two colors per row. That's it. And all your stitches, your floats are only three stitches apart. So that's going to be a little bit easier to deal with. That's like this hat. You don't have to worry about catching your stitches. Oh, look, I've done three stitches. I've done two stitches. I'm on to my next color. Um, so your floats are going to naturally stay smaller. So that's one less technique to worry about. On this one right here, gorgeous as it is, you've got longer repeats. On the other one with the stripes on it, you have longer repeats. Those types of things are going to make a big difference. And you glance at that huge chart right there, right? And you can see, I'm going to go a little closer. You can see right here on all of that, there's no more than three stitches between any of those things. You might have a solid row of just one color. Well, that's easy, right? You know, you drop the other one, you do your solid row, you come back and you're doing two colors per row. So that's one of the things I just wanted to show. It might not be as difficult as what you thought. It really isn't. And one of the other books, so this book right here uh, was first published and printed in 2012. Uh, this, At least this book, this particular one is, what were you doing 10, 11 years ago? Uh, I did see you can get it on Amazon. If you are interested, you get the paperback, which is just like this. It's in its 20, it's like 22, $23. This brand new was uh, $24.95. So price is pretty much the same. It's an out of print book. But if you really wanted it, you can get it. Now, it is an interweave uh, press book. So if you went directly to interweave, you might get it there too. I didn't check that. So maybe if I think about it, I'll check it and put it in the description box. I will put the Amazon link. Um, I'm not affiliated with anyone. Just sharing. That's all. Just sharing the fun stuff. Let's get a bigger close-up of that one right here. That to me is so pretty. You've got that beautiful lace on the edges and the nice pretty color work. This book also has a lot of cables. I'm a big fan of cables. The bag here is along that same principle that I was talking about with your smaller float. So if you wanted to practice and play, that's something that would be a good starting point. Now these are larger projects, but it's still a good starting point. This one right here, your floats are a lot longer. So you're going to be fighting with that and you're going to have more of a tendency to maybe uh, making those longer floats and too big, too loose or too tight where you're going to have issues and you're going to get frustrated or potentially that's the case. One of the other books that you probably saw me show is this one right here, Viking Knits. And it's been on sale with Amazon for like $16, $17. Uh, I paid the full price that it was $29.95. I think I got a little bit of a discount at Joann's, but that's the full price of it. Uh, I liked it so much when I saw it on sale at uh, Amazon, I bought a second copy and gave one to one of my friends because, well, I like it. Why not? I've made, um, my husband's sweater is in here. It's the Papa sweater, but I wanted to show you some of the color work that's in here. This one right here has the gorgeous yoke on it. 
and that one's not a bad one to learn with but there's there's still some stitches that are more than five apart so you would have to catch your float on those and that's that tendency to right here where you can you know because your yoke is a circular thing you can pull too tight so even that one might be a little bit um questionable one that would be a good one if you're wanting to make a sweater and do the color work on the yoke one color that's it right there you have two rows on that entire thing that have five stitches between colors everything else is in that three stitch range so that's going to make it a lot easier and you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck with that it's going to look really aesthetically pleasing people aren't going to guess that you made that that's going to have that really polished finished off look but it's another fun one and there's not a lot of color work in that one but it gives you that chance to dabble in it and this book has a lot of things in different sizes so it'll have the pattern and the child size the woman size the man size so you can do that this is another color work in here that i like because they have it in the hat form and that right there is again easy enough with the stitching apart you don't have stitches that are too far apart you don't have long floats and you can do it in the hat form so then you can practice with that and think you you, you can look at it and go well, wait a minute are my floats too tight are they too loose do i like the yarn that i've used and you still have a finished project and that's i think is really exciting if you're wanting to look at and go for color work so you've got this one too same concept right there and again a hat version that is going to help immensely nobody likes to do swatches maybe you do but people generally don't like to do swatches we want to jump right in it says i need a size eight needle by golly i've got a size eight needle and worsted weight yarn and i'm going for it well yeah it'll fit somebody but it might not fit your intended person you might knit tighter than what they've done in the pattern book you might knit looser than what they've done in the pattern book but if you have that same concept and you're like i'm going for it i've got yarn i've got needles i've got this cast on for the hat it'll fit somebody it'll be amazing it'll fit somebody you can practice with it and that's your gauge swatch but your gauge swatch is 100 percent usable and giftable and you look like a hero here's that hat up close again and you can see what i'm talking about on how close those stitches are you know you've got that that chart right there very simple that's a great one for color work you've got a couple rows that are just plain knitting and then two rows of very easy color work then back to plain knitting so it gives you that relief row you know especially when you're first starting with color work it might be cumbersome to constantly look at a pattern it might be cumbersome to say what's my next stitch that's a good process and everything to work with that's why i did this because it's not something that's really mental mind consuming this one i had to pay attention to the graph on the pattern so this one was more mind consuming than that one so take that into account and give yourself um you know a little bit of relaxation you've got this you can do this you can make these things and you can do so much more than you ever thought you could do if you have one of these books by all means use it if you have any other stitch book uh, you can get a lot of those stitch books at thrift stores you can definitely borrow them from the library and you can also go online if you don't want to invest financially that's fine too go online and look at other fair aisle patterns you can find something that's just three or four stitches and practice with that and just keep doing that as a repeat you can do like i did here and make something up yourself right very simple very easy to do to see how well you are doing with this technique and there's a lot of different ways to work on holding your yarn if you're a traditional thrower are you going to hold your yarn in your right hand and your left hand doing one one where you're throwing and one is continental so it's very interesting lots of different ways that you can hold your yarn to get that same effect i hold my yarn in um, my left hand i hold both colors in my left hand and i wrap it around my finger 
uh, use of this finger as a tensioning finger. And I have one yarn going underneath and over and the other yarn going over to the other side. So then they cross right here at my finger. And that way I can keep them separate from being, you know, tangling up and I can pick which color it is that I want with my other needle. So there's a lot of ways that you can do this and you can add new techniques and increase your skills, whether it's with one of these books, get out your graph paper, use your imagination, draw some simplistic little graphs, you know, three, four stitches, that's it. Just alternate those three or four stitches and you can change colors using two colors. Um, add a third color in, you know, put a, put a row in and everything, add a third, add a fourth color, not necessarily in the same row, but do uh, a couple rows of um, black and white and then gray and white and then a light gray and white, you know, something along that line. So you're gradiating as far as that goes. So you've got more impact. That's what they were doing with this right here just adding in the different colors they were still using just two colors per row but the impact on that is wow that is so amazing and just so intricate it's not as hard as it looks and I just wanted to let everybody know that that jump on new skills try out new things use it in a hat format very easy, very simple, and then go from there. But you have the talents, you have the skills, and you can do it. You may not have thought you could, but you can. And I have faith and I have confidence in you that you can grab a book that you already know, go to the library, go online, buy a pattern if you want to, there you go. But you can try it and you can learn new things. I have confidence in you, you've got this. Hopefully this has inspired you to look at some of the things that you already have and try something new. Let me know down in the comments what you're going to try. I really want to hear about that. And if you've done something, send me a picture. My email's down below. All right, everybody. You guys have a great day, night, evening, whatever it happens to be. And I look forward to talking to you all again. Bye-bye.